Hi and welcome back to the Thriftier Person. Today, talking once again on investments, I want to talk about something that's rather important and it deals with the different ways that you place a trade for any kind of security that you particularly would like to purchase for your portfolio, preferably a diversified portfolio as I've discussed in several different videos. So let's begin about the different ways in which to make your purchases the good, the bad, and the ugly of each different way. So let's start. Let's talk about the limit order. I think the limit order is one of the best tools under some certain circumstances. And those certain circumstances would be as a for instance, when, when the housing market wasn't moving, it was stagnant, but yet the stock market was rising. When the sequester happened and people were being furloughed and every federal agency had to cut 8% of their budget and people were being laid off and unemployment was taken from the 99 weeks down to whatever the state minimum was so people stopped receiving income and couldn't pay their bills, you know, their rent, their utilities, their electricity. Why is the stock market going up when people are becoming unemployed or the unemployment checks are stopping but the stock market is going up but people are defaulting on loans, mortgages, utility bills, etc., etc., etc. How can the stock market be going up because companies aren't making profits if people aren't paying bills? Hence the limit order. So the limit order for me when, when 1 plus 1 equals 3, which is, means when the stock market and financial figures equal 3, uh, as Congress has clearly shown us they can do rather well, in my personal opinion, I like the limit order. The limit order I use is when the numbers don't capiche and I say I'd like this particular stock or this particular exchange traded funds because I'm an exchange traded fund type of person and I say you know what this fund just three two months ago was seventy one dollars we just hit the sequester and now this exchange traded fund is eighty six dollars how could this fund jump so high with a sequester, the failure of Congress to pass the Tax Act, etc., etc., and on and on we go. Housing is sluggish and the whole nine yards. There's no way I'm going to pay 80 some dollars for a stock that just uh, a month or two ago was in the 70s. And I'm looking at the numbers and one and one, according to Congress, equals three, and that's perfectly acceptable in my opinion, according to Congress. So, I put a limit order because I know that one and one doesn't equal three, and sooner or later, it's going to correct itself so that one and one will equal two. So I put in a limit order saying, all right, fine, so Congress can't add. We clearly have seen this over time and time and time again. Uh, look back over time. Look back over the last four, eight, and twelve years, I think it should be completely sufficient and obvious and factual that they clearly can't seem to do anything whatsoever to get anything correct. As we can clearly see from what's going on in this current period of time, we are suffering more than we ever have. And the banking deregulation didn't come from me. It didn't come from China. It came from Congress because Congress passes the laws. And that's not my opinion. That, my dear, is fact. So, moving on to the limit order. So, I don't want to spend $86 because the, the numbers just do not come, uh, come out uh, correctly. So, I say, all right, I'd like this exchange-traded fund, but I'm not willing to spend this outrageously inflated price because I know it's not worth it. I won't, I don't mind spending maybe $71.61, so I'm going to put a limit order because I know sooner or later that this is going to correct itself. I can put it in for one day. I can put it in for 60 days. I can cancel it at any time. So I use the limit order to hedge myself against faulty math and the fear and inflation that happens on the stock market due to false information, speculation, fear in the market, uh, hype, and so forth that goes on to try to protect myself against these frivolities that go on between Congress, the Federal Reserve, 
people who get all, oh, buy now, buy now, buy now. Ah, yeah, you buy now, and a week later, it's, you know, $10, $15 less because, you know, you, uh, you as in, you know, a large group of people, you know, went out and bought it all because you thought it was going to rise, and then it's $20 less the next week. Silly, silly people. You really need to pay attention. You learned math in school, didn't you? One and one never equaled three. And if it did, clearly, hopefully, I hope you dropped out by third grade or stayed until 12th grade and learned one and one does not equal three. Moving on back to the limit order, getting back, I can't stand people who just don't know how to think. So, the limit order. If I say $86 for this exchange-traded fund, I think it's overly inflated. I can place a limit order. I'm going to place it for 60 days. I'm going to set it at a price I think is much more reasonable. Let's say 74. I'm going to set it for 60 days. I can cancel that at any time if I choose to do so. When the market actually comes back together and puts the numbers together and says, oh, wait a minute, one and one isn't three, it's two. And it drops down, guess what? Bada bing, bada boom. I didn't get taken for $86. I got my exchange traded fund, however many I wanted, for the price that I wanted. More often than not, if you wait it out, it will happen. So that is the benefit of the limit order. I would recommend that you use it when one and one equals three, when you clearly know that it equals two, a limit order is your best friend to wait it out until somebody with a brain comes along and says, hey, wait a minute, this isn't right. Moving on. The next type of order is called the stop order. A stop order is pretty much similar to a limit order except for one thing. It does not guarantee that you will get uh, that price or better, that price that you set. Uh, a stop order uh, tells the trader on the trading floor uh, to buy or sell uh, whatever security uh, when it reaches a certain price. Uh, for example, uh, say you want to sell uh, some of your stocks uh, when it reaches, say, $60 a share. When the stock uh, breaks $60, uh, a share, the trader begins trading on the floor. Uh, and most likely sells at $60 per share. Sometimes there is a chance you will receive slightly more or slightly less than the $60 per share because by the time the stock hits the $60 and your order actually trades, the price can change unlike a limit order. Uh, just close to 100% of the time, if it doesn't change, uh, it will only be by a little, a couple of cents or so here or there. But, uh, but imagine uh, you put a sell stop order in at 60. Uh, the price hits 60. The trade starts to trade on the trading floor from your trader. But then it is uh, found out that there's something wrong uh, with the trade. Uh, what most likely would happen is the stock would plummet, clearly. Uh, see also Enron. Uh, see many companies during the dot-com. See many companies during 2007, 8, and 9. Uh, and therefore, the trader on the trading floor would be forced to sell those shares of that particular stock if that company, all of a sudden, news came out that they were, you know... Uh, having financial problems, they were in debt, or their patent failed, or whatever the case may be, if it's a pharmaceutical, your trader may be forced not to sell it for the $60, but may be forced to sell it for $2, so you've just had a $58 loss. One of the issues with the stop order. So, be very careful, cautious, and try to be as knowledgeable as possible when using the stop order, because the stop order is a very useful tool, but be, can become very dangerous because you don't know what's going on inside of these companies. So, be careful, do your homework, do your research before placing a stop order because it can be very, very, very beneficial, but it can also be very dangerous. The last order I'm going to cover is the market order. The market order is an instantly executed order. Uh, you set whatever uh, exchange-traded funds, stock, whatever the case may be. You set its ticker symbol. You set how many of them you want to buy. And then you just hit submit. 
and uh, it will buy it at whatever price it is at the time the trade is executed on the trading floor by the trader. So, uh, in a case such as this, if this is how you would like to, uh, to do so, it's an instant execution, so please make sure that you have more than enough money in your brokerage account to cover this transaction because, say for instance, you're looking at your, you know, you're looking at a stock and, you know, you're watching maybe Market Dash or Yahoo Finance or MSNBC, CNBC, all the financial stations, and you happen to notice this particular stock, XYZ, is trading at 2252 so and you want it because it was just thirty dollars yesterday. You go and throw in a market order for ten shares at you know for this particular XYZ stock. It gets executed and voila, guess what? While it was trading in those thirty seconds, it for some unknown reason it shot up to forty seven dollars a share and you ordered ten. I don't know what I said before, but let's say ten. So that's four hundred and seventy dollars. Let's say your brokerage account only had three hundred and twenty five. Guess what? Your brokerage account clearly states if you read your agreement that if you do not have enough money to settle your 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 purchases, that they sell your first purchase stocks to pay for your oldest. And if your first purchase stocks, like mine, are cheap because I bought them when the stock market was crashing in 2007 and 8, so some of my exchange-traded funds, which are now in their 80s today, were purchased back at 35 and 40 and 50 dollars back then, would be sold then. I I would be really aggravated. So make sure you have enough money to cover when you place a market order because you never want to come up short and you find out that you do, contact your broker, your discount brokerage firm and see what you can do to prevent any of, uh, uh, early, any of your previously purchased stocks, bonds, exchange traded funds, whatever the case may be from being sold, especially if they're way cheaper than what you just purchased now because you don't have enough money to cover it. And if a brokerage firm is able to legally do so, they will tell you how to get the money in there to cover that trade. So those stocks, bonds, commodities, whatever the case may be, don't have to be sold and you can cover your purchases. But always make sure you have more than you need if you're going to make a market order because one boo-boo can cost you you more than what you actually just purchased and that's how market orders work all right remember it takes just seconds for market order to execute unlike a limit order or a stop order have a nice day and that's the end of the basics of the three types of ordering processes I tend to use have a good day you be safe be smart and always remember education is an ongoing process it only stops when you stop learning